UFC Fight Night, Tyra versus Roy Val. Welcome, everyone, to Winning in the Shadows. Andy and Jim, we're going to break down all the fights. Let's get right into it. Hit the like button. If you have not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. Code word for today, blue. Just type the word blue in the comments section if you don't have a hot take. Uh, if you don't want to leave your best bet, helps the algorithm out. Code word blue really helps us out. Let's have uh, let's let's YouTube know that uh, you guys appreciate what we're doing. Uh, Jim, let's get right into it. Junior Taffa. Uh, darn it. I'm so Wait, sad. I know. I was waiting to bet on Chris Barnett, uh, honestly, at, at plus money. Uh, Strikers Delight. I think Dana, was, <laughs> I think they looked at it and they were like, enough's enough. Give Junior Taffa someone that <laughs> is just going to stand and bang with him. Uh, what's your take on this uh, short notice replacement? I'm out. <laughs> I think that's a I'm safe out. bet. I'm out. <laughs> that wise, I'm out. Uh, look, uh, yeah, what are the odds even? Do we have odds yet? No, I, I don't even care what the odds are. Okay, if Junior Top is a favorite, I'm not betting them. It's that simple. Uh, I'm not laying any kind of money on a Top or brother. I don't care who they're fighting. Um, so, yeah, I'm out. This guy's 31 <laughs> years old, and he only has four fights. They're I just, know. They're, they're lightning quick. He's fought cans. I mean, it's perfect for Tafa. It's great for him. Uh, <laughs> it's just he's not a good fighter is the problem. It's I just... know. I know. I was uh yeah. Well, we'll move on. There's really not much uh not much meat on the bone on the on, on that fight unless you're looking at unders. You can definitely see unders. I think someone's going to sleep. But... Once we get once we get full props, I'll I'll most certainly look at them, but Okay. Yeah, not a Tafa fan. Uh quite the opposite of Junior Tafa and Sean. Uh, Shroff is uh, Corey McKenna and <laughs> Julia Palastri. What's your take on this one? Well, Corey McKenna made the only decision she had to make wrong <laughs> in her last fight. Yeah. Just literally do not grapple. And she did. Uh, can we say that this Corey McKenna experiment is over? I, I know she's young, but are we going to look back on her career and just say to ourselves, like, God, she wasn't UFC level and never really was. Listen, she beat Demopolis on contender series. She's yeah. three and two. Kay Hansen, who's an OnlyFans model. Miranda Granger, what's she been doing? Um, nothing. Nothing. Exactly. And then she fights Cheyenne, who nothing. Does not look <laughs> great. Hasn't done anything. Never looked good to begin with. And all right, so how do you lose to freaking Elise Reed? I mean, come on. Split decision. One judge could have gone another. It's just, way. it's inexcusable. It's just, that's, I think Palastri is going to roll in this spot. Oh, okay. I, 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 I do. I think that she brings a, a level of violence and grit that is missing in some of women's MMA. I think she's got a ton of potential. Now, here's what I'm worried about. She's just getting to Vegas on Wednesday. She had a bunch of visa issues, travel issues. I don't know what it was from. But she's still only getting to Vegas till Wednesday. So I am not going to be betting this fight until I see weigh-ins, period. Okay. So I want to see what happens if she misses weight, if she looks good. I'm fine letting the numbers do what they will. But for me, it's Palastri or nothing. I just cannot bet on Corey McKenna. We, who was the, the male fighter that we were talking about this with the T-Rex arms? It's Corey McKenna. Oh, yeah. She just can't get in range to even use her striking unless it's – a clinch. I just she's at so many physical disadvantages in MMA. I'm going to be on Palastri. I mean, the the case for McKenna is she got a real quick lesson. Of what happens if she tries to grapple? It goes to the ground and she's lost. So um, that happened last time. I think she's going to do her damnedest to keep this on the feet. I do like her forward pressure, and I watch Palastri get a lot of forward pressure and her fight against Knutson, but Knutson's you know kickboxer. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what she does. I'm with you that it's Palastri or nothing, honestly. Uh, I, the pro, it's like ah, uh, you got to lay juice on Palastri. We really want to do that, but it is Corey McKenna, so it's probably a pass. I I can't see a very confident uh, play on this one. It's kind of kind of going to be a theme to this card. There there, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of really confident betting opportunities, um, but uh, sometimes you know fight nights are like that, and you just got to pick your spots. Save your money. Don't mm -hmm. don't don't have that nightmare card where you go, you know, one and six on plays. So, um, yeah, the first two fights probably nothing there. Dan Argetta and Cody had uh, this is our uh, we actually got a chance to go back and look at our notes. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been doing detailed notes from this series, this uh, season's contender series. 
already coming into uh, play here. What do you like uh, on this fight? This line on Dana Arqueta is going to stare me in the face, probably right up until fight time. <laughs> yeah. <I get laughs> right up saying. into fight time. It's just, it's a debuting fighter. It's a debuting fighter who has a record of guys that is just not impressive. And I know he's coming from Australia and Australia's hot. But in your debuting fight to be a minus 180 favorite, when you're fighting guys, Billy Brand, who's five and one, who was not good at all, that's your best record that you fought. Is an yeah. experienced guy, and now we have Dan, who's been in the ringer, back up against the wall. I mean, look at Paul Lugo, nine and seven. Uh, another guy's got double digit losses. It's just Argetta is not the best fighter in the world, and he looked very, very bad against Matsumoto. That being said, w would you rate Matsumoto higher than you do Hatton? I would. Oh, way, way, way higher. So not even that, the different stratosphere. That comparison to me is null and void. And if you're going to handicap this fight, just purely looking at the fact that he lost to a younger guy that was off contender series, I think that's a real lazy way of doing this. Um, and Dan wasn't doing too bad in the beginning. It fell off a cliff. Don't get me wrong, but he wasn't doing too bad. I just haven't seen enough from Hatton that I think can warrant this price tag. And we're down about three cents on, on our already since Monday. So if it starts really plummeting, I am going to be very, very tempted in uh, Dan Argetta. I just think that this could be a veteran lesson for Hatton for his debut. Why did he look so slow against Matsumoto? I don't know. I don't know. I, I went back and looked at it. It looked like it looked like his bones were frozen or that his joints were like they had elastic on them, like they were bungee corded together. So why did he look so slow? Um he had his moments against Matsumoto, but it, it was a terrible look in the second round. Mm -hmm. Um the, if he comes out like that, it's gonna be a massive speed advantage uh for, for Cody and I will say that. Mm -hmm. And if Argetta falls off a cliff like he did in the last one. Um, it's it's tough to me. It's our getter or nothing here. I, this is another one I kind of want to wait and see what he looks like at weight. Mm -hmm. Like, does he look stiff? Does he look loose and free? If he looks loose and free, it's dog money all day. But man, if he just looks, if he looks, if he looks nervous and the pressure. I mean, he's a lot of pressure on him right now. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm with you. I I appreciated that Haddon did what he was supposed to do, which is you know, beat Billy Brad in the first round. We were on that. We cashed on him. So we had a good read on him. Um, it's dog or nothing on this yeah. one, but maybe potentially a good live betting opportunity. Fargetta comes out of the gate fast and then starts, starts to slow down. And it looks like he's got his energy. Then it's going to be, uh, you know, live bet on that one, but can't lay the juice to, to start. Won't make, won't make it my parlays either. Mm -hmm. So Jonathan Pierce and Pat Sabatini. Odds are pretty close here on this one. Great matchmaking. I think this is going to be a pretty fun one. Uh, who do you like? Is Jonathan Pierce going to do it to everybody again? I'm talking about what he, what he did in his last fight? or Talking about making a stupid decision to lose a fight. He's done it two fights in a row, really. Two in a row. Although, I, the, the David Onama fight was a war. That went back and forth. I thought it was a really good one. But the Joe Anderson Brito, I mean... Mm -hmm. I've gotten Christmas presents that weren't gift wrapped that that good. He so. made a lot of errors in that Onama fight. He made a lot of errors. That's more so what I'm I'm speaking on is for such a great grappler that he's billed as. Boy, does he get reversed a lot. I mean, how do you end up in such a dominant half guard and mount and lose it? It's just inexcusable at this level if you're going to be some kind of massive wrestler. The thing is, I think Pat Sabatini is absolutely washed. In the straight, I think Whoa. that chin is dust, absolute dust. And again, what is this guy doing in between fights? He's entering grappling matches. Are you a grappler or are you an MMA fighter? Because personally, I don't think Pat Sabatini needs to work on his grappling. <laughs> just, just saying. Fair point. Maybe you shouldn't be in the grappling competitions and get your ass to Muay Thai class. And figuring out how to move your head since your chin is dust. Just a thought. As a coach, we and Eddie always say coaching and, and trainers and stuff. We wish we could be coaches and trainers because decisions like this would not be made if he was my fighter. They'd be like, oh, you want to go grapple? No. Yeah. You're going over to Alex Pereira's gym. You're going to train some Muay Thai. Like, yeah. 
it's just inexcusable. Um, I, I just think his chin is dust, and I think that Pierce can crack it. Pierce is not the best striker whatsoever, but it doesn't take a good striker. Damon Jackson knocked him out with a front kick, which he's <laughs> never thrown ever in his career. <laughs> so for me, this is Jonathan Pierce. I think this number is going to look like a massive discount. Uh, if he can just not make a bonehead decision and stick his head in a submission, that's simple. Big if, big it's if. A very, very simple fight here if he can just not make a mistake. Yeah, I mean, the, the I think you covered it. The big holes are Jonathan Pierce's uh, boneheaded decisions and ability to be reversed and Pat mm-hmm. Sabatini's lack of striking. I'm going to lean Pierce as well. Like, I, I, I really think that whoever wins, it's just going to be a glaring mistake. Like Pierce mm-hmm. is going to do something dumb and Sabatini is going to submit him or Sabatini is going to grind out the rounds or Sabatini is just going to get lit up. Like it's going to look like a dominating win, you know, from someone. And I'm with you that Sabatini striking is just awful. That What's interesting is defense the, is awful. The under two and a half is plus 140. So if you think somebody makes an error, which we've seen both guys do. But yeah, both guys do it. It's, it's, I mean, what more do you want for an under? Uh, it's I not bad it yet, but plus yeah. money on that. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, it's Pierce or nothing for me on that one. And honestly, I, I do lean Pierce. I, when you have a guy that gets knocked out when he can't win on the ground, it's just, it's too big. And I think Pierce is good enough, strong enough. Like he makes bad decisions sometimes, but it's not every decision that he make is bad. I think he can stuff Sabatini and keep this on the feet long enough to, to just wobble Sabatini. That's the thing. Once you touch Sabatini is, is grappling he, and wrestling is gone. He so. goes white when he gets, <laughs> he gets, he goes white. He is you're in headlights when he gets once <laughs> CJ Vergara and Ramazan Tamirov. You got any thoughts on this one? Not betting on CJ Vergara. Okay. That's him. Uh, to me is he's not a bet on fighter. I just, okay. Okay. He had that massive comeback, which he's going to probably be known for as his biggest achievement in his MMA career was that fight. And not impressed with anything really after the wins. Uh, Salvador, I think, is horrible. <laughs> he is. Yeah. Almabayev's great. Like, he's fantastic. And losing to Almabayev, uh, that's no, there's no shame in that. Um, I just, uh, there's nothing the guy does great. There really isn't. I can't get behind him. I don't know a whole lot about this Ramazan guy, but I mean, boy, look at that record. Uh, it's 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 a shiny record. He's coming in. You know, I'm not seeing a whole lot of distance, so it could be a cardio spot for Vergara. But as far as a pre-fight bet, I have nothing. I will sit there and watch this fight live and see if I can get on something. If not, I am passing entirely. I'm hoping this gets to round two, and I want to see this uh, Tamirov's cardio tested. This I, this could be, this could easily be one of those ones where Tamirov dominant first round starts to get a little tired because Ver- I do know Vergara's not going to get tired. Yes, like 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 Tamirov's pace is not going to get CJ Vergara's uh, cardio down. Now, could Vergara tire out Tamirov? Absolutely, Vergara does. You know, he's constantly moving and pushing forward. If Vergara wins, it's going to be one of those where he loses round one, squeaks out round two, and just grinds out a very tired Tamirov. Uh, to me, I'm I'm with you that it's not a bet before, but I will have my live lines open for sure, hoping that Vergara almost gets put away in round one and Tamirov kind of goes a little bit too too hard, too fast in his UFC debut. I'm with you. I don't know him a whole lot, but... um. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to bet on uh, a guy making his debut um, at this price. So hopefully, we get a good live line on that one. Clayton Carpenter versus uh, Lucas Hosha. This guy, we haven't seen either of these guys for a while. What do you think? No, that's that's what's got me twisted. Uh, yeah, we really don't know what improvements we're going to see here. Uh, I think this is a fight. I kind of had it pegged in my notes. It actually says wait and see because I think one of these guys could come in looking absolutely out of this world. Fantastic. Oh, because they're at the ages where they can make the improvements. Uh, they've had some time off. I just, it's got all the recipe for, if you're really look, like I'm saying, you're not seeing grappling matches. You're not seeing exhibition, this exhibition, that (laughs) these are guys that are in the lab. They're getting better They're They know that this is their time to get better. So I don't feel comfortable handicapping this fight. Um, 
I know how long it takes to make improvements, and these guys have that time. We, we there's a whole lot we do not know. Um, I will say the experience for Rocha at 17 and one makes me lean towards the fact that he would be a little bit more of a finished product. I think we could have seen a bigger jump from Clayton Carpenter, but this will a hundred percent thousand percent be a wait and see spot for me. I will not be betting this pre-fight. I think this could be a curveball that people do not see coming. Uh, I'll step out and take Clayton Carpenter in this one. Okay. Uh, Hosha's a lot of holes in that game, mm-hmm. uh, especially with the takedown defense um, and the ground game. But his contender series fight, man, he was losing. He, yep. he was absolutely losing until the, the Hail Mary knee came out of nowhere. And it was a brutal knee, but up until that point, Bittencourt was out wrestling, mm-hmm. out grappling, uh, doing much, much better on the ground. And that's kind of what Clayton Carpenter does really well. Um, so at least, at least that's what he did, you know, um, you know, in, in contender series and uh, in his UFC debut. I think that's the pretty big. If, if one guy has a big hole in their game, it's Hosha's uh, with the takedown. So I'm gonna, I, I will lean Carpenter here on this one, and uh, not just lean. I, I feel pretty confident. Um, that Carpenter gets it done. I will say Hosha does have good, good power, good KO. Carpenter, I think, has a big advantage on the ground. I would lean this fight not to go the distance as well. Maybe Clayton, maybe Clayton Carpenter by finish, but I think one of these guys gets finished in this one. Uh, I think there's too many. Hosha with the power, Carpenter with the submissions, and under would be a lean. But I like Carpenter as my as my favorite pick in this particular fight. So that's another plus money under two and a half. Yeah, mm-hmm. like whenever I get a guy that is just really bad on the ground, yeah. <laughs> like it, it's always wide open. Once you get guys that are bad on the ground, possibilities are endless for how mm-hmm. at, like, how that fight could end. Um, so I, I, I would absolutely take the plus money on that. And I mean, not only have we not seen these guys in a minute, we haven't seen them in well over a year. So it's kind of interesting what these guys have been doing. So uh, Nico Price and... Uh, Temba Garimbo. Uh, interested in your take on this one. Garimbo, it's interesting because he's got probably the most interesting backstory going on in UFC right now. Mm-hmm. He's kind of a boring fighter, so they can't really do much, do much with it. Like, he's not super marketable. Uh, what do you think here about Grimbo and Nico Price? I'll tell you what they can do. They can throw him Nico Price is what they could do to make him exciting. Because Nico Price is still going to fight like it's 2007, but his chin is 2024. So the brain is there, but the body's not. It just isn't. Um, I think this was uh, the Alex Morono fight was like the delayed stay of execution for Nico Price. Really was. It was Um, so bad. That fight was was so bad. bad. Uh, Again. Um. Entering grappling matches. <laughs> like, Result I'm, unknown. I'm so over like, this. It's, I'm over it's this. 2023 and 2024. How do you have a grappling match, Nico Price, that we don't know the result? It reminds me of like when LeBron would make a great tight end in the NFL. Like, no, <laughs> stay in your lane. You're a fighter. Stop it. You get broken in half the first tackle. Don't even go there. Uh, so he... Throws a fight, I'll say it, against Robbie Lawler. I have uh, questions. I have questions about that fight. This is right up there with Amanda <laughs> Nunes. I've never seen someone pop up from being out cold so fast with a smile on their face. <laughs> he went from unconscious to standing, hugging, and smiling in what? Four seconds? 40. 40. <laughs> like, it takes me longer to get out of bed than it did for him to become conscious again. So I have real questions about that. Um Follows it up with one of the worst fights I've ever seen. Him and Alex Morono somehow wins because Alex Morono's washed. We'll get to him. Uh, and now I think they're like, okay, we're, we're, we're done with the Nico Price experience. I would assume, was his last fight uh, the last fight on his deal or might have been? Um, so he either has a new contract or this is his last fight, one of the two. I doubt he has a new long-term contract. I seriously doubt the UFC would extend that. Uh, this is a great way to get Themba a highlight reel finish over a dusty old washed-up Nico Price. Yeah, 
You know, I, I don't know what to make of Grimble. So uh, if, if you don't know Grimble's story, he was so broke, he couldn't afford to eat. Uh, some fighters took him under his wing. I actually got him nutrition. Then The Rock jumps in and mm -hmm. gets him a house. And I mean, he's ripped off three straight wins. It's amazing how getting proper nutrition, getting any nutrition uh, makes you a little bit better. Um, you know, in his last fight, it was just to push up against the fence mostly, but he's got the cardio to do it. That's the thing. Like, and you Nico know, doesn't. He, and uh, yeah, and that was the thing. The only reason Nico Price beat Alex Morano was because <laughs> Morano gassed a little bit worse than Price did, which is a miracle. But Morano was winning in the first yeah. round. There was there was grappling exchanges that Morano was winning, and then Morano Nico Price falls off a cliff. Morano's mm -hmm. like, "Hold my beer, I'll fall off a cliff worse than you." And it was just, it was awful. Like if Nico Price was fighting anybody else besides Alex Morano that night, he loses. And One I was of not the worst fighting. third rounds in history. Oh man, was it? It was brutal. You were like, "Is this a ten round fight?" No, three. Um, so I, Grimbo, I think just needs to stay out of harm's way in the first round. Don't let Nico Price land one of those shots. But can Nico Price even land that shot anymore? I mean, lost to Waller, lost to Bro. Yeah, he he has. You know, he just hasn't. <laughs> up kick in 2019 Stop. against James Vick is his last, uh, you know, finish. I, I think Garimbo probably pushes him up against the fence and controls him and just tires him out. And uh, after the, after the first round Price's cardio is probably yes. gone and Garimbo is probably going to keep going and it's probably going to be a boring fight. Um, I wouldn't take it to go the distance cause it's Nico price, mm -hmm. but, uh, I think it's Garimbo and I, yeah, I think I think UFC keeps feeding Grimbo, literally feeding him food and fighters yep. um, that that he can beat. So it's Grimbo uh, for sure in that one. So uh, real quick, guys, just want to tell you guys what we have up for this week. We have uh, five percent UFC play on this card. Actually, we mentioned that it's not a high volume week at all, but there is a couple bets that really stand out. One of them is five percent worthy. So. If you have not gotten that, grab that over at Wager Talk, wt.buzz slash al for the shortcut. And our college football best bet is up 18 and five lifetime, four and one this season. Nice cash last week on uh, the Indiana Hoosiers going over their team total. And we've got another team total that's up. College football, we only do one play per week, and it's just worked out beautifully. So uh, grab that. If you have not joined the Discord, go ahead and do that. Uh, you can copy and paste that link or just look up Discord of Winning in the Shadows. We've got some free plays. We've got some really nice uh, discussions going on there about live bets, just about anything. It's, it's, an, it's the adult version of Discord. It's not a bunch of arguing and <laughs> just a bunch of nonsense in there. Uh, we, we've done a really nice job uh, keeping it clean, keeping it professional, and everyone in there has the same interest. So uh, if you're interested in like-minded people who takes their bankroll serious, encourage everyone to join that. That's a free discord and just full disclosure. Uh, and yes, it is easy to have full disclosure when you're doing well uh, mm -hmm. this year, but we always talk about our wins and our losses. Our uh, 2024 official record, 450 wins, 291 losses, 147 units of profit, 8.6% ROI. That is all sports. Uh, UFC and MMA have been going great. And next week is PFL. So get ready for uh, PFL. It's, it's Try and cash this 5% uh, UFC and then roll it into a 5% PFL next week. Oh, man. Daniel Rodriguez and Alex Morono. We just talked about Morono gassing worse than Nico Price. Uh, I, I can't believe Alex Morono is still fighting. Uh, surely we're not betting on him, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thank you. No. Breaking news. Uh, not betting on Alex Morono. Uh, I've heard a couple breakdowns on this. I saw this line come out and I loved it. Absolutely loved it for Daniel Rodriguez. And I said, what am I missing? So looked at a couple other, you know, uh, pieces of information about this fight. And I keep hearing, and I know because I follow the fighters and we know what these guys have done. This high credential black belt that Alex Morono was. <laughs> one of the highest ranking black belts in uh, MMA with Jiu-Jitsu. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Oh, yeah. He's like a fourth or fifth degree. Black belt. Okay. He's up there. He's up there. Is he going to uh, show us? <laughs> there's my point. Um, look, black belts are not all created equal. <laughs> this is the one thing, and, and you know this drives me nuts, when you hear fighter introductions and you hear jujitsu purple belt, jujitsu brown belt, black belt. 
I know millions of brown belts who can kick the shit out of black belts in multiple <laughs> disciplines. Okay. Uh, okay. Just, I used to love not being a black belt and getting to compete in the black belt tournament because you're underestimated. The belt doesn't mean crap. You got to show me that you're going to use it. Now, I could look like a massive sucker after this fight if he somehow gets a rear naked choke on Daniel Rodriguez. But we just haven't seen it. So I can't bet on something because on paper it says it's going to work. I got to go with my eyes here. And Alex Morono has no cardio. He has no power. He's got no defense other than staying out of range. He's a he's a master of staying out of range and doing nothing. <laughs> well, he also Absolutely ends up nothing. staying out of his own range. Exactly. Where he, where he he's the king of swinging and hitting air. He stands upright. There's no power on anything. And if he gets caught by Daniel Rodriguez, I think that we finally are going to see Alex Morono hit the deck and not get back up. His cardio is not going to be there. D-Rod coming off the Gaslam fight. Uh, refresh me if I'm wrong. We loved Gaslam in that spot. Yeah, we did. We, we loved, loved him, him, right? Yeah. And that was a no-brainer. No-brainer. Fighting Gary in that situation, that was a weird fight. It's a Gary fight. They're always weird fights. No shame in losing to Neil Magny. Uh, yeah, especially 2022. No, not at all. So at this point, I don't know who's more committed. I think both of these guys are kind of looking at the next part of their careers, but I can tell you what my eye test says. And that is, I am staying as far away from Alex Morono as humanly possible. I love Daniel Rodriguez in the spot. Yeah. Uh, Morono's cardio is I, like, yeah, he won against court McGee and we were bet We bet on him against court McGee and we were terrified. Mm -hmm. He got annihilated in the second round. Court McGee took him down and, that was that uh, he barely kept it on the feet in the third round and squeaked out. But I mean, he's got a, he's, he's got a submission win against Tim means and Tim means is now getting submitted by everybody <laughs> these days. No surprise. Yeah. You know, goes to decision against Mickey Galt, David Zawada, Matthew Selbersberger. Um, So the, 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 the list of winners, Alex Barreto's beaten, uh, not looking good. And this, this fight against Nico Price, we cannot emphasize enough how bad Morono looked uh, in rounds two and three. So D-Rod is the pick for me. And it's amazing Morono's three years younger than D-Rod, but giving D-Rod the big, big advantage in uh, in the cardio. So Might be a Jose Aldo age problem with that. Yeah, yeah. Score. It don't look it, I can tell you that much. <laughs> uh, Josh Fremd and Abdul Razak Alisson. I mean, to me, this is striker versus grappler. This is... Striker versus grappler, and this is who's going to make the mistake first? Well, they're both going to make mistakes. We know that. <laughs> this is true. Um, I don't know who's going to make it first, though. This is the problem. And I, all it's going to take is one in this well, fight. Is Frem going to walk into a punch, or is Alisson going to walk into a takedown? Yes. Who's, who's, who, who is it? What do you think? Come on. You got to pick uh, one. Who's <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. Don't make me. Um I'm going to take Josh Fremd. I don't to like make it. to make the mistake or to, to win the fight. <laughs> <laughs> to win the fight. Okay. Uh, All right. Alisson's ahead. last fight against Cody. <laughs> yeah, he looked good. That's great. That's wonderful. Um, if that fight got extended another two minutes, I got a feeling Cody Brunner was going to end up on top, and it was going to be a really bad night for Alisson. <laughs> Are we in agreement with that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Cody Brundage, my God, I know, I know, I know. At like, least yeah. these were legitimate elbows. Co I mean, Co he did get yeah, blocked. yeah. Cody sh shoots and Allison landed thirteen or fourteen, uh, just massive elbows, and some mm -hmm. of them went to the back of the head. Uh, Cody Brund, I've never seen a guy get away with uh, winning fights and no contest mm -hmm. because of blows to the back of the head. Now, this one were actually. Blows in the back head, but it did show that if you shoot in on Allison, you better get him down exactly. because he's going to rain down some big time shots. So I'm with you that I think Fremd eventually gets to take that because Allison's cardio is non-existent after the mm -hmm. first round. Um, you know, it, you know, he loses the, the, the split decision to Buckley, but Claudio Ribeiro, that was a tailor made like striker versus striker. Yep. He gets submitted against Joe Joe Pfeiffer. Mm -hmm. um, Fremd is not good. We know this. 
but the advantage does lie in the, the, the grappling and the wrestling. And if, if he can get him on the ground, I just think when Alisson gets to the ground, you can just keep him there for the entire round. Like Once for him, he's flat, it's over. Yeah. He's not getting up. He's not building a base. Um, getting him there is the hard part because of his judo background. Um, he does have really strong hips, but let's not forget about the length of Fremd. Um, he's a tall frame. It, it's a, he's, he is tall. He's big. He's, 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 the size is going to be interesting because Alisson's a little bit shorter, stockier, mm-hmm. like more muscles and such. So That could really be an asset for Fremd in the grappling. If he can get this cage control, I think that his height and the length of his arms are going to be a real problem for Alisson defensively. Um, I don't see this fight going the distance. Mm. Not one bit. Yeah, he's uh, like six inches taller than Alisson. It's a big difference. It's a big yeah. difference. And not that that's going to help with like the blast double legs or the single legs, but against the cage, lace one leg, throw your arm over. He's got so much length to tie up Al Hassan, who's more of a short, stocky guy. And once he, if, if he can get to the point where he gets his hooks in, we've seen Alisson flatten out so easily. So and it, that's going to be Frem's world. So um, I think this is another one you could bet live. I think that if uh, Alisson doesn't get the knockout in two minutes, mm. you're going to fire on Fremd. And Alisson probably lands a pretty good shot in the first two minutes too. You might get a better number, uh, but I'll go Josh Fremd. All right. I like the under. I think that's a good way to play. It's an okay. Alisson fight. So mm-hmm. yeah, looking at unders. Chitty and Jaquani and Jared Gooden. Oh, oh. <laughs> this Any- card. <laughs> any it's it's a pretty rough card. Uh any hot takes on this one? Second time for Chitty at this weight class. I'm very curious. Very curious. This has piqued my interest. I think we should take a lot of what we know about Chitty and put it out the window a little bit. And mm. that was evident on that Reese McKee fight. You saw an extremely measured Chitty and Jakawani. Now, Jared Gooden is not going to come out and push some kind of pace uh, like the Oleg Zaychuk fight where we saw Chitty gas up a higher weight class. I that, think that this was a gassing. Class, I don't know if I've seen somebody like absolutely fall apart yep. within three seconds. He was going, he was going, he was going. And then it was mm-hmm. like the battery got taken out. <laughs> Eyes went like this. <laughs> Done. It's a wild, uh, wild one. I wonder if this move to this weight class is forcing him to be a little bit more patient. Like he doesn't have an option uh, now to go balls to the wall or play smart. Uh, Jared Gooden's back in the UFC because he accepted a late notice fight against Carlson Harris. And he probably signed a three fight deal. They gave him Wellington Terman, who we know now is one of the chinier fighters on the card uh, or on the, on the roster. And now they're giving him Chitty in his second welterweight fight. Uh, I know there's an age advantage for uh, Gooden, but I just don't think Gooden's that good. He isn't. I think the the more damaging strikes are going to come from Chitty, and if we see that measured approach, he's going to keep Gooden on the outside, and I would not be shocked to see another decision. Oh, I was going to say overs. Yeah, overs all day is, is the so. way is the way I'm looking at it. Jared Gooden's not finishing Chitty. Chitty learned his lesson, mm-hmm. and it's like I got to You you can't fall apart like you did against Oka yeah. Sacha. You just can't. So um, yeah, I'm with you that uh, I think Chitty and I mean this this fight against McKee that was never in doubt going to the distance. It was really oh, yeah. really boring. Um, Jared Gooden, kind of the same thing goes the distance against, against Harris. I mean, he gets finished against Terman, but Terman's just so awful. So, yeah, I don't care who wins. Just give me the overs on this one. It's probably juicy. Haven't looked at it yet, but that's a potential parlay piece depending on what the line is. So, Grant Dawson and Rafa Garcia. Uh, I don't know. 16-3 on paper sounds good. I'm just never really impressed with Rafa Garcia. What do you think? Nope. I agree 100%. I looked at the records when I first saw this fight, and I'm like, oh, Grant Dawson. Then you start thinking about what you've seen from Rafa. And God, is it disappointing. It is yeah. so underwhelming and disappointing. Just nothing kind of ever happens significantly. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Uh, there's never a saying. moment in any of his fights. Uh, losing to Natan Levy is a bad look. 
Well, no, he beat he beat Levy. Oh, sorry, sorry. You're, yeah, be, yeah, you're, that, you're, th that, you're thinking of yes, uh, thank you. Thank you. That fight, that was awful. Oh, that fight haunts my dreams. Yeah, it was a really bad dreams. one. I, um, I lost. I definitely lost money on that one. Um, but yeah, yeah, Natan Levy stinks. Jesse Ronson and all of his roid no issues. Juice, yep. Yeah. Uh, and then goes a decision against Masha and Clay Guida, where Clay Guida decided to strike for the entire fight. What a yeah. gift that was! What a gift yeah. that was to Rafa. So. That was a gift. That was a gift. And I don't think he's going to see that against Grant. <laughs> <laughs> you think? I If Grant Dawson has a morsel of a brain cell in his, uh, they are going to be on Rafa's back so fast. Yeah. Like, it, just get this guy to the ground and do your thing. And we saw it in the last Grant Dawson fight. You called it out to a T that that Bobby Green fight threw everybody off the scent of Grant Dawson. Oh, he's the chinniest fighter in the world. <laughs> he freaking dominated Joe Selecki. I mean, it wasn't even close. Uh, he learned his lesson. What I like, too, is he didn't screw around on the feet. Even though he was fighting a guy who was not much of a striker, he was like, you know what? This is what I'm good at. Uh, cardio advantage, most certainly Dawson. Give me, it's got to be Grant Dawson in this spot. I can't see Rafa Garcia beating anybody who is fringe top 10 worthy. It's really funny. Like one knock, <laughs> he got hit with just an amazing, like one in a, one in a hundred punch from Bobby Green. Now he's, if he would have won that, now you're looking at a title, run. title yeah. contender. It's a run. <laughs> and he's fighting Joe Selecki and <laughs> Rafa Garcia. I'll take it. Uh, I, I got I got to be honest. When I, I went back and kind of watched that Rafa Garcia, uh, Clay Guida fight because I was like, "Huh, you, decision against Guida is interesting." Yeah, Guida didn't try any wrestling, or anything. it was very strange. And Guida got his ass kicked, mm -hmm. uh, striking, and I was just watching Garcia move around. He not that terribly fast. I was like, Dawson's gonna get get a hold of this guy. As soon as that bell rings, mm -hmm. like you may hear the vibrations of the bell <laughs> at the same time that Dawson's getting in. And the, the nice thing about Dawson is, you know, you got to worry about the wrestling and will they stand them up? Dawson gets on nope. your back and locks in the body triangle. And they don't stand you up. Nope. You, what, what, and that is, I say that uh, Dawson is the best uh, body triangle from the back in UFC. What he is. It's yeah. you cannot reverse it. Once he gets those legs wrapped around your waist, you're just not reversing it. And he's going to stay active and win the round. So I'm with you. It's Dawson probably by decision. Uh, that's kind of the kind of the Dawson way, like beat the guy up on the ground, but doesn't quite get the finish. So probably Dawson, uh, Dawson by decision. All right. We got two fights left again. If you have not hit the like button, go and do that. Now code word is blue. If you could put that in the comments, Really appreciate you guys. Tell me who your best bet is. But uh, if you don't have a hot take, you just want to help us out, just type just type the word blue in the comment section. Our boy, Brad Tavares, <laughs> against against another one of my boys, Iron Turtle, Jung Young Park. We've done really well on Tavares. Uh, we took him uh, to be – We took. I think we got his last four fights. We got losing to Duplessis, yep. losing to Silva, winning against Weidman. Mm -hmm. And then losing against uh, Gregory Rodriguez, so it's a guy we've we've correctly hit on his last four fights. Do we feel confident enough uh, to make it five in a row? What do you think? I love Park in this spot, but something has kept me off this fight. Hmm. I it just I really want to fade Brad Tavares. <laughs> I do. I think I he's do done. Too. When you start seeing Brad Tavares get knocked out. Uh, that's a bad thing because he's a guy who has hung his hat on his durability. So the knockout against Reg – look, Gregory Rodriguez can knock anybody out. But the fact that it came in the third, at that point, if you remember that fight, there was a lot of action from Rodriguez, and they were going at it. So for Rod is, is it impressive that Rodriguez carried his power, or is that a sign that the Brad Tavares chin is officially cracked? Because we've seen all year guys lose pa their power after round one. So for you to get knocked out in the third, I don't think it was a cardio issue. I think it was just Rodriguez hit him like a truck in the third. Um, so I don't know what to do with that. I have major problems with the Weidman fight still to this day. That he, for some reason in his career, did not take the opportunity to KO Chris Weidman. Like, talk about opportunities missed. 
<laughs> why? What do you not like money? You don't want a bonus? I guess you're making enough, Brad. Um, I don't think there's much more for Brad to do in this. And Park is just – Park is like a, a Toyota Corolla. It's not going to light the world on fire. But, man, that thing is going to be around for 279,000 miles. And all you got to do is change the oil. He's just the same speed all the time. And it works. It works. That decision against Muniz, I thought Park won it. It still haunts me. Yeah, I I thought he did enough. And if he did, we're on a five-fight win streak with his only loss being Gregory Rodriguez. So Interesting. The the A side to me is Park. It's under minus 200. You can play it straight. I just don't understand why I haven't done it yet. There's something about it that's kept me off. Maybe well, you can shed some light. Yeah, so split decision against Eric Anders, Joseph Holmes, Dennis Lulin, and Albert Duraev. That's why. I mean, Duraev's his best win, like, uh, you know, I mean, Derive, he's got a win against Kapilov, but that was before Kapilov made all his changes. And, you know, Derive loses to Buckley, loses to Park, uh, beats Chitty, but barely by decision. But Dennis Tulin's awful. Joseph Holmes is awful. Eric Anders is terrible. So I think that's what it is. Like, like credit to Park, like you said, he's the Toyota Corolla. He just, you know, keeps on chugging along. But the fact is he couldn't. I, like as as terrible as that fight was, Muniz just like got him down and just held him there and did absolutely nothing to him. Yeah. Um, fact is, he couldn't get out of out of that. That's a problem. Is Brad Tavares going to do that? Absolutely not. No way. Like Tavares has got pretty good takedown defense, but on the feet, like what have we seen from Brad Tavares to make us want to want to support him? I, I I'm like. Beating Chris Weidman the way he did was actually a terrible look. I was worried yeah. that could we bet on him, and I was worried he was going to lose that one because mm-hmm. uh, they were going to because I thought they were going to give Chris Weidman the Weidman treatment. Now they did it the next fight, but uh, <laughs> uh, them them and the good vitamins showed up at Chris Weidman's uh, next fight. Yeah, but I, I'm I'm with you that Tavares is just a fade. Like, what's he what's he going to do to park on the feet? Like. Throw he's not couple, knocking him out. No, he's gonna throw a couple punches every minute. Like is he so his back low volume? The cage, right. I was just gonna say he's gonna end up moving backwards because that's what he does. He couldn't even push forward against Weidman, who was on one leg. Mm-hmm. Um, and Park is gonna push forward the pressure. Park is so sneaky with his takedowns, even though Tavares does have good takedown defense. It would surprise me if Park ends up on top. Um, I just don't see where Tavares does have the offense to actually like do enough damage to park. Uh, so park is the play for me. Just, just cause I, I don't see what Tavares' upside is. Like what's he do good. Like seriously, what does he do good? I, I don't, I don't know what he does good right now. Let's see. He's another guy that we talk about where the first thing you say is, wow, he's tough. He's a dog. And he's like, been knocked okay, out two great. out of it's, his last it's three. It's a skilled <laughs> MMA fight. Uh, you have to have some skills to bring to the table. There's being tough is not a skill. No, you're either it's... given a God-given chin or you're just one of these mentally strong guys. Yes, you can say it's a skill, but you got to have some actual offensive skill. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that, that's that's the point. I don't – okay, is he tough? Yeah, okay, he can take a beating. Okay, yeah, but he's been finished by Bruno Silva and by, you know, by Gregory Rodriguez. Does Park have that kind of power? Not Gregory Rodriguez power, but he can hit. Yeah. He, he, can, he can touch you. So I, I think it's Park – just because I, I I don't see what like name what's what's Brad's path to victory. It's not on the ground. It's not high volume. Split decision, low volume, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, like, but Park Park's yeah. not that low volume. Like Park's not going to throw one punch per minute like Brad can get into. So what I like about Park is he throws. I think his striking is underrated. Uh, it's absolutely he throws, underrated. He throws Striking's really good. really nice straight shots. Um, and we spoke about this on Contender Series last night. What Park does is he just keeps touching you. Then he just keeps touching you. He doesn't overextend. Every once in a while, he'll put some oomph on one, but he just keeps touching you. And it's more of an accumulation of paper cuts that get him the wins more so than, you know, the machete. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, main event time, Brandon Royval and Tatsura Tyra. Money keeps pouring in on Tatsura Tyra. 16-0. Uh, and 0. Jim, is this his first loss? What do you think? It's going to be his toughest fight. Oh, 100%. I mean, it's, it's not even in question. Um, I like Tyra a lot. I like him a lot. Uh, 
little side note, Ty, Ty, uh, Tyrus from Okinawa, which is where uh, my style of martial arts is from. So I've been a fan from him of him before he was even in the UFC. I knew about this kid. And uh, the impressive thing is, is he's not a karate based fighter. He's a wrestling based fighter. So really, really impressive to come from that side of the world, which is good of grappling that he has mixed with the striking. Um, people were worried about his striking and I, I happen to know his background and, and what uh, style he's trained in. And I knew he had striking in his back pocket, but the wrestling is where he makes his bones. Um, that fight against Perez has me a little worried about this one till Perez hurt his knee. I didn't think it looked that great for Tyra really didn't. Um, he was on his way in a five round fight to a fight starting round three against a veteran fighter who's been there, done that, and was holding his own. So I'm not jumping all, all up and down saying, my God, that was amazing. Um, and I think that if you put Alex Perez and Brandon Roy Val in a fight, I'm taking Brandon Roy, Roy Val, no doubt about it. The chaos that he's going to bring forward to Tyra is something he's never seen. I don't think he knows this pressure. And that could be a real problem with a young fighter that can get psychologically in your head. You say it, you want to say it at 16 and 0. Is Tyra going to, yeah, is Tyra going to finish his career undefeated? No, nope. I don't think so. So, you know, wins is lost coming. I, I, I'm with you that Roy Val's got some, Roy Val's going to cause some big time problems. And I know Tyra's, you know, see, now he's this great guy on the ground and everything. And mm -hmm. Roy Val struggled with, you know, getting taken down. Roy Val's been fighting Braden Moreno and Pantoja, um, Nick Lau for, you know, for what that's worth. You know, Matt Schnell back in 2022, Bond Train, Pantoja, Moreno, Kai Carf, Carf, like, it's a who's who. Of, yeah. of this, you know, of this division. And I thought, I thought Tyra got, I don't want to say like, like gypped out of a good opportunity, but man, that would have been a great fight That's against great Alex point, Perez yeah. if, if it would have gone a long ways. We could have seen what Tyra's made of in the later rounds. We could have seen what happens with a guy that can fight back. Like he knocks out Carlos Hernandez. Um, you know, Edgar, Edgar Tyra's took that fight on completely short notice. And yes, it says go to decision. Tyra laid on Chires for the entire fight. We, yeah. we saw no levels to Tyra's game. It was just a domination on the ground. A couple of submissions to Vergara and, you know, Aguilar. So, you know, this Perez thing, he faced adversity and we didn't get to see how he was going to really deal with it. No. So that was a, that was an unfortunate learning experience that he didn't get to, you know, go through. I think he's going to go through it here. And I think Roy Val tops him. Um, Roy Val is going to have this jab and this long reach that Tyra's never seen. I'm sorry. You, you, that, that Roy Val just, he is so awkward. He's just standing there with his hands at his side and all of a sudden bang, mm -hmm. like, it's just like, fuck, you hit me with a jab again. Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're, on, you're right, man. It comes from weird <laughs> angles and he throws it from his waist, which a lot of guys don't see coming. It's just, he's really good with it. I think Roy Val is going to have the better cardio. Uh, and the only reason I say is because I've seen Roy Viles cardio. I haven't seen Tyra's. Um, what was it? This like short notice with the Roy Val Moreno. That was short notice. Roy Val, like, like, yeah, looked great. Uh, you know, goes to all five rounds and gets the split decision win, you know, barely loses to Pantoja. And I just, I, I think if, I think if you fought Moreno and Pantoja, I'm just, I'm not sure you're that intimidated by Tyra and Tyra's ground game and submissions. I think Roy Val's just kind of seen it all. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a I think this is the spot that Tyra loses. I'm stunned that this much money is coming in and that this price is is coming in on him. I I I I, I really can't believe it. And what did I see? Like Brandon Roy Val's like been an underdog in like his last like eight fights or something. He's four well, and first three. First of all, that's how you bet Roy Val. You don't yeah. bet Roy Val as a favorite. You bet him as an underdog because he brings a level of chaos, which it makes him susceptible to getting hurt and getting injured and you know uh hopefully we don't see another fight end by random injury like we had to this past weekend yeah um but yeah he's a underdog i'm not gonna say he's a dog <laughs> yeah he's an underdog um yeah i i just i think you could probably still watch this live and get a good number on roy vol uh something's fishy this line is just fishy isn't it 
It's uh, to me, it's crazy. I mean, this, this is just saying Tyra's just going to absolutely ask exactly, him, which I, I just. No, which I, is I, I if that's the case, given the title shot now. Why is he fighting Roy Val? Um, yeah, it, so it just like, makes no sense. Like if Brandon Marino couldn't whoop his ass, and Pantoja, you know, barely beats him. Not not an ass whooping. Like Tyra's the guy that's going to really put him on him. I I just don't buy it. Like if Tyra wins, it's going to be because he controls. Roy Val on the ground and it's you know, be boring. He, boring. It will be it will be a boring and I, I I gotta tell you, Tyra's look a lot more interested in trying out that old striking. Yes, he you has. know, like Carlos Hernandez, he gets his first knockout win and then you know tries to stand against Perez. His his, his path to victory is to try and you know take Roy Val down, but I, I just think Roy Val's striking is gonna be a little bit too much and it's gonna be different. I love your point about the chaos. It's going to bring a chaotic nature, and I think Roy Bala ends up kind of controlling the pace, which is going to throw Ty. I think, I think Tyra's just going to see a bunch of things that he's not seen in this one, and Roy Val, this this may be a really, really good learning experience for Tyra. Maybe he comes out better. I mean, I, to me, it's kind of a win-win for Tyra. If he loses, it's probably going to be, okay, I know I know what I need to work on to fight in the best and win the championship. Now we got to make some adjustments. We'll drop down a level of the competition – beat two or three guys before we get a real shot. But if he wins and looks great doing it, then great. You get all the answers. So I, I, I think it's a great setup for Tyra. Um, he may have all the pressure on him, but like he's so young in his UFC career, whatever happens here is just going to be a good thing for him. But especially at the price, Roy Val's the pick. For me. Uh, I, I, with the wrestling, like Tyra's going to get a takedown around one. Just if he decides to get a takedown, he's going to get one. The thing is, is, Roy Val exhausted Pantoja <laughs> from the bottom when Pantoja was grappling. Yeah, just That's pure how activity. Hard the champion had to work to hold this guy down. So to take a, a kid who has never been five, never fought at this level, and expect him to be able to do that and maintain that pace, round four, Roy Val ain't laying there. Truth. <laughs> he's he's gonna look like a spider monkey trying to get up. He always Truth. Does, so. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Always moving around. So all right. So uh yeah, for, for these picks or for the main event, Roy Val at, at the at the plus money, and you're right, live this could be a live betting haven uh for yeah. some of these fights that you got guys with bad cardio, you got a really weird card with a lot of bad fights on there. So could do really, really well with live betting. Um we will be live on the winning in the shadows YouTube channel. Uh, on Saturday for uh, for this fight. So been doing really good with our live bets, um, definitely. Dana White Contender Series was a big success uh, again on Tuesday. So uh, if you want to join us, really encourage you to. The live bets are where it's at in UFC, and this card could, could prove to be really, really profitable with some of them. So, all right, guys, that is going to do it for us. Thanks again for watching. Uh, appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the like button. Leave oh, we the word. Our, um, we got to do our uh... – on this it? card, on this card, you want to do woulda, coulda, shoulda on this card? There's lots I was, of options. I, I don't even, I don't even <laughs> think it's worthy of it. But all right, we'll do it. All right, all right, let's do parlay buster. Jim wants to do the parlay buster. Uh, I like the, the parlay coulda, buster. All right, all right, all right that's, go. that's my favorite one to pick the one that everybody's gonna play. Okay, what's the parlay buster? Well, based off of line movement, like we're saying, that's insane. I'm gonna go to the main event just because main events are chaos. Absolutely. Yeah. Tetsuro Tyra is 100% the parlay buster. That's going to be the one that's going to anchor every play. Good luck. Have fun with that. Yeah, having betting against Brandon Roy Vall in your parlays is a terrifying mm -hmm. thing. So uh, I'm with you that that's the parlay buster for me. That's pretty easy. All right. Woulda, coulda, shoulda on this card. Ugh. Uh, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> the woulda, coulda, shoulda is the fight that, or the pick. That was like, ah, oh, why didn't we lay the mortgage? Jonathan Pierce at minus 180 over Pat Sabatini. Oh, okay. All if right. he lands one shot on Pat, Pat is just not the same fighter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, God, a guy who got knocked out by Damon Jackson, we didn't lay the farm against, against a guy who made two mistakes. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let's see. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Uh. I'll go Iron Turtle over Brad Tavares. I like think at it. the end of the night, I think at the end of the day, we're going, really? We didn't, <laughs> we were worried about Brad Tavares winning a fight in the UFC late 2024. Yeah. Uh, so there's your, there's your, there's your what it could have. We both agree the parlay buster is, uh, 
the main event with Tyra and uh, the woulda, coulda, shoulda and going with Jonathan Pierce, which I cannot argue with at all. Uh, Jonathan Pierce. I'll go with Iron Turtle uh, as our woulda, coulda, shoulda. So. All right. Now we're done. Now Sorry. we're done. No, no, no. It's I, I was I was I consciously was like, this card doesn't deserve extra segments. Uh, it's so bad, so bad. But what are you gonna do? So, all right. Once again, join us live uh, Saturday evening for the uh, for the for the uh, the entire card for live betting. Good luck under your place, and we'll see everyone later. See you guys on Saturday.